but mm. <laughs> good afternoon, evening, morning, whatever. Is there time? Is there a place? There is now because you're here. It's humancolony.org. This is our regular Saturday webinar, so a big welcome to everybody. My name is Rowie, and it's my absolute pleasure today to have and be here with these amazing people. So, really, it's the 3rd of October. To, uh, I was about to say 1951, but that's actually the day my dad was born. <laughs> so, we've been busy today celebrating my, my father's birthday, my late father's birthday, so I got a bit confused. It's 2015, 3rd of October. And um, we're here together for our wonderful channeling webinar. Um, it's gone from Jim to Kim and all the way through to rocks. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our very special and seriously, I don't know where he's manifested from, but I don't know where we'd be without him. Guru Dan, where are you? Hello, everybody. I have a quick announcement as soon as I get to it. Uh, I'd like to announce the Reiki class on October 19th and October 26th. It's going to be in two parts. They're going to be from uh, 2 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, you can sign up for them on the page called Reiki on the humancolony.org uh, sign up page. And Jim accepts sign ups at uh, Reiki at humancolony.org. Um, I'd like to remind everybody about the uh, guided meditation on Sundays, and that's all I have for just at the minute. So, with that, let me introduce everybody here. We have Alex, Sandra, we have Roe, of course, and Chris, and Makiko is here, and Michelle is here, and Neil is here, Noha is here. Sure is here. Of course, I am here. And the beautiful Roxanne Swainhart is here. Roxy, how are you doing? I'm wonderful. Can you guys hear me okay? Hear you perfectly. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Would you like to begin? Yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead and uh, start our channeling um, after whoever comes in. I, well, I know it's going to be Osiphius at first, and we'll go from there. And then if you guys have any questions, type them in the chat box for the ones in the room or give them to Dan. And out there on TV land and uh, live webinar, you can put it on the comments um, or join the Q&A through Google Plus and uh, bring your questions forth. And let's rock and roll with the Ascension, okay? Good? It's all good. Actually, uh, all right. If they want to give questions on the Google Plus events page, it's easier than that way. I'm not so spread so thin trying to okay. find all the questions. All right, thanks. Perfect. All right, put me as presenting and let's rock and roll. Yay, there I am. Okay, good. <clears throat> Stand by. And greetings once again to the collective. This is Osipius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. I bid you a good day. Let us adventure once again into the unknown. The now only leads to the unknown. That's where we always are, on the cusp of discovery ourselves. Our ascension in your terms. Let's figure out the game, how it's playing out. All the scorpions in your mind running around trying to figure out A, B, or C, when the truth of the matter is just B. And everything will come, and it's perfect now. Trust. All right, <clears throat> let us begin in this idea. There has been, let's say, a disturbance in the force, if you will. There has been much controversy on an idea, and it is most, let's say, expanding. Hmm. There is an idea that of Bashar channeled through the idea of Daralenka. And there has been, let's say, much interaction, action, and such upon the idea of copyrighted material. And then the question came forth to that of Roxanne. How do you feel about this subject? And truly, she feels the same way, let's say, we do, because we are all the same idea. Hmm. 
is. All right. As far as the idea of copyrighted material from the perspective of this Oversoul Collective, hmm? it is, let's say, not idea validi validated in our reality. In other words, if there is information that is brought forth from this idea of Roxanne through whatever means she puts it out there, use it in any way, shape, or form. Because that is the idea of expansion, the idea to validate the separation with the laws of copyrighted material is an idea to be played out. Beautiful. We have no ill will or harbor towards these ideas. It is that of a free will choice. It is part of expansion. It does not need to be dwelled upon in, let's say, long-term ideas. It is what it is in the moment. If you engage in an idea of using copyrighted material, then you are choosing to validate that idea with the other opposing member or not. It is depending truly upon your vibration and the reality you create for yourself. Because most certainly you are on your own platform, your own holodeck, your own universe. And according to what you put out will be the reflection of the mirror. So if you go into using the idea of copyrighted material with the fear aspect, then the vibration might just bounce back to you with the same resonation. However, in this idea, once again, any, any, any material that is, let's say, produced in your terms from this conduit, use as you choose. Because the more here, the idea hmm, of about, let's say, what we're speaking from, Truly, the encompassing idea is to give you your authority back. Oh, yes. In that idea, use as you choose. For the more understand themselves in this wonderful journey of ascension, let's say, hmm, possibly the ascension accelerates that much more. Could be. Most excellent. So in that fashion, we would like to say, that is their conclusion of how we feel about copyrighted material in this production idea. Booyah! All right, <clears throat> moving on. Let us say this. In the expansiveness of now, there is always an opportunity for each and every one of you to find a little bit more of themselves in each moment. What we mean by that is there is always a presence of a vibration that is expansion. Listen very closely, class. The idea of expansion is always happening. It doesn't matter hmm? what you're choosing. You're still, circumferencing idea, experiencing. And every experience is weaving your tapestry of life. No doubt. However, we would like you to notice, once again, that there is a resonation of repetition. And there's a resonation of expansion. Hmm? So once you find yourself in a predicament of boredom, you can choose most certainly the idea of the repetition to pass the time. Hmm? However, if you sit within your own self, realize that you are God, realize you have everything available to you built into the construct, there is no limitations truly. You are not limited at all. It is only your beliefs. So the encompassing idea class is you are unlimited period. There are many other, we will take a side note here, there are many other fractals in the idea of a logos creating a reality of third density limitation that cannot go beyond a certain point, for that is the game. Once again, humanity, your game is unlimited. You have access to all, only according to you. This is why we harbor, dwell, ponder upon you and finding yourself within giving your own authority back to yourself. So in that idea of boredom, and you have nothing to do, sit and dwell within your reality. Take your time, for you have no time, and you will never miss anything because you don't have time. There is no time, so dwell and take your time, if you will. So in that idea, you can sit and feel, and let, let, let your mind wander. There's many ideas that your mind will go, what you call to the negative aspect, and you start receiving a resonation of resistance. Mm. Your own resonation is not resisting quite, uh, let's say, fluidly. But let me ask you this, entities of ascension. 
Is there anything in creation that is not unconditional love? Hmm? Is there any thoughts that are within your thoughts that is not unconditional love? If you are God, then are you not having God's thoughts? Oh, yes. So do not harbor and, let's say, dwell upon the idea of negative aspects of your own thoughts. For this will only, if you do choose to push them away, give yourself an opportunity to get them again and again and again and again and again. Why? Because you want to heal any aspect of the illusion that, let's say, limits you. And when those ideas come up and give you a resonation of A, B, or C, and you take your judgment plate and deal it out and say, well, this is a spiritual, maybe this is not so spiritual, and this is negative. But it all comes from one place. Oh, yes. It can be no other. And that is the state of being of unconditional love, creation. Always know this, entities. Always know that you're allowed to follow your thoughts to the deepest, darkest corners of your minds. You will not spin yourself three ways from Wednesday and never be able to come out of the, quote, rabbit hole. Because the rabbit hole is a belief system that confines. There is no rabbit hole. There is only you and the dwellings within yourself. Let go of those definitions that keep you, let's say, staving off, diving into the depths of your own soul. The depths of your own isness, that there is a playground that is forever within yourself. And there is the idea of letting go of the repetition. It's inside where you can go. Many of you always want to idealize action as ascension. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm out on the streets. I'm helping. I'm expanding. Yes. But if it comes from a resonance of accomplishment, intention because I can't do anything else, there's nothing going on around me, I'm bored, then you're coming up with an idea of trying to be A, B, or C. No. Sit. And when that slipstream comes, that's when you take effortless action. It is my, like many of you that are out there, well, we'll take the idea of gardening. Hmm? It is not a chore to garden. It is meditation. It is not a chore to cut the grass. It is meditation. It is not a chore to wash the dishes. It is dwelling within. It is within your own uh, isness of yourself. That kind of idea, stand by. <clears throat> In that idea. Understand this, entities. When you dwell upon yourself in those times of slipstream and you take action, the action is not intention of an outcome. That is the purest state of being. We are effortless gods. We always will be effortless. We always will be the will of now. That means your willingness, not your intention. There's a big difference between this humanity. and We understand that you want to be that. So you come from a standpoint. Listen, let's play the game here a little bit. You come from a standpoint of isness. You are all that is. You are unconditional love, experiencing your vibration with absolutely 100% no intention. It is natural. You're a natural creator. That's what you are. So in the idea of coming from the construct of the matrix, the birthed mind that you are playing with every day, hmm? That mind says through its taught belief systems of hundreds of thousands and thousands of lifetimes of humanity's dwellings, humanity's validations of belief systems, that intention creates reality when truly will creates reality. Make sense? Think about it. So when the idea in when you allow yourself the vibrational thoughts to come in because you're not focusing on something, looking for something to do. Energy follows awareness. So when you have no intention of anything, that's when the vibratory states come in. It may take a few nows, relax, be in patient, in patience, be in the dwelling of patience. Make sense? And allow these vibrations to present an idea that will spur you with no intention. 
It is that urging that you all have felt. Excitable. Hmm? Not, let's say, laborious in any way, shape, or form. Not seeking in time the outcome of this new idea. It just is what it is. And you love it. This is to, let's say, a way to shut off what you call your intentional mind. Because that is the mind of the construct. You are willing your reality by being your natural self, which is no effort. Truly, understand this. Dwell upon these words. Sit in your isness. Dive into your heart of all that is. And understand you have a playground that is endless. Mm, most certainly. We would like to expand upon another idea. The idea of allowance. I would like you all to view yourself on a park bench, sitting there with maybe, let's say, one or two other light workers around you. And outside, in that, let's say, vast area, there is a playground before you. And within that playground sits humanity. And I want you to look at humanity as the lost children playing within the idea of the playground, being themselves. Many of you have sat in this idea in your 3D reality and have experienced this. You have watched children play. Maybe you, some of you jump out to be, let's say, precautious and not have a child to get hurt. Hmm? But most of you would just let them play. <clears throat> and this is what I would like you to start using as a practicum. Let the children play. View them as children in this playground experiencing themselves. They don't need your help on where to go. They don't need your idea of limitations, of precautions, of safety, of security. They need allowance. For there is no greater joy than to have yourself take action and discover yourself. Because then otherwise you are playing on someone else's blueprint of life their way uh, that life should be. So you are now the masters, the light workers, the one that allows those to play in the playground uninhibited by the construct of limitation. We would like you to do this in all of your actions. You will have moments, of course, of slipstream ideas to speak your joy. And it will be in perfect timing. You won't be urged to respond because it comes from a construct of intention of I need to fix you. Because most certainly there's not one, not one of you that is broken. Oh no. You are all individual singularities of all that is. You are all creative gods. You are all journeying home on your idea of yourself. And the more you allow people their own authority back, those lost ideas, back, give them back their authority and allow them to play, then most certainly they will always discover themselves and they are love. However, if you present a vibration of limitations, then they continue that vibration in your mirror. The version of them is the one you just chose. Think about it. Choose your own vibration in those interactions of love, your natural state of being. It is truly effortless. That offers the version of that entity to present itself. They recognize you. Mm -hmm. They recognize themselves. Oh, yes. And maybe their past histories doesn't explain, let's say, their ideas of ascension, their ideas of love, for the ideas of their action was most certainly, let's say, a falsehood in a lot of your eyes. Hmm? Something that is not needed. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. Every person in every now and all the nows is acting upon their best self. And if you allow them a higher vibration of themselves, instead of confiding them to the past of themselves, then they will expand. 
Do you understand now how you guys are masters? How the light workers truly work? How the light workers are allowing the garden of the gods to be the most fertile playground of all? Hmm? Oh, yes. Dwell upon these words once again, entities. Be that of love. Be that of light. Mm, most certainly. <clears throat> Beautiful. There is an idea that we are feeling with many of you out there of questions and answers. There are some specific ones that are, let's say, let's say most exciting. Hmm. Very good. So, in the idea of Guru Dan, how are you? I am well. How are you? Awesome Blossom Possum. I like blossoming possums for some reason today. Mm. <laughs> we have a question from uh, Member Sure. He, he may have several questions. I know. Let's, let's give him a chance. Well, we have this. several nows. We have several nows, yes. Those are good. Sure, are you available to speak? Uh, yes, I am. How are you, Cepheus? Greetings, that of sure. How are you, doll? I am awesome. I'm a big fan of yours. It's nice and lovely to speak with you. Booyah. <laughs> um, actually, I have some uh, questions off topic, but... Um, there is no topic. There is only now. We're never going to limit ourselves to a topic. They're all offerings. It's like a basket of apples that's laid upon your door. Take a bite, eat it or not. Doesn't matter. There are offerings. Speak your joy. Okay. Um, well, I know that uh, the Gilchrist Nir had a meeting on the 28th when the Blood Moon was, and I was wondering how it went. Stand by. And the idea, the representation of that idea, encompassing idea of this group of Kirk Frenier speaking with the idea of the governments. And there is a representation of the results of that hmm, through what you call your political realm. Watch your videos. There is, let's say, more that are going to speak up about the idea of this disclosure in rapidity over the next idea a few months that will be much publicized among your news media even the ones that are confining the idea controlling that of the idea of let's say Fox and this representation will show you that the meetings with the government was let's say a positive outcome ah, I see and, you, and another question on that topic I'm going to limit ourselves for a moment um, was the holographic travels were approved? Yes. Really? Wow. Doubt yourself not. Hmm? Yes. That's all. Wow. That's awesome. You just make my week. You know what? My mouth. <laughs> I would say it major now. And Thank now you very, forever. very much. You're most welcome. And maybe we'll speak again. At your leisure. Mm. <laughs> no, how are you here to speak? Yes, I am. Hello, dear one. How, how are you doing, Osophagus? Wonderful, uh, Noha. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Excellent. Regarding the what you were saying today about the intention and the will. Okay. Yes. What I gathered is uh, um, I have the intention. Okay. But probably I won't do anything about it. So uh, the idea is there. But the will is the action part. Isn't it right? It comes in this process. The will of the action. Don't put the term action on the will. The will draws into your vibration the effortless action of the outcome that you perceive. In other words, let's say I want to do something, but I don't know how, and there's nothing there for me to do that. 
So this is where you just let the will create the idea of the vibration that allowed you to take effortless action on creating such idea. But intention takes your past memories of outcome, of accomplishment, of success, of doing, of creating through the paradigm of history. In other words, we're not talking about history of writable facts, tangible. We're talking about the resonation of using the past idea logic to create of intention, which will give you a lackluster outcome. The will is the highest being, the highest state, the natural isness of yourself, of creation. So that's where you dwell upon the idea. Yes, you have it, but it's not necessarily action. It is just more of an idea of being and allowing those vibrations, those realities, those framework outskirts, the, let's say, that will bend your current framework into a new reality. Make sense? I.e., it's like a push. It's like a push. Center. Yes, an effortless push. I like that. Booyah. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Great. This is my question for the day. Thank you. If there are more, you can speak up whenever you want. Whenever it comes up. Thank you. Booyah. Press the mic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have a multi-level question from member Wendy. Wendy says, I send my timeless love to Roxy and Osiphius. I would like to know more about the golden disk containing vast amounts of information and energy that was energetically transported from Lake Titicaca to Sedona. She says, as I understand it, we can energetically intend our telepathic connection to this disk to access the information. She wants to know, is there more you can impart on this disk, our connection to it and the information it contains, and if it's connected to Bashar's ship over Sedona, and how, it, and how is this connected to the information that she's been receiving about the chakras of the planet and being in conversation with each other and how this is connected to her. So, oh, and Wendy just popped in. <laughs> she could have asked that herself. So she's here to, um, if you want to ask questions about what she means. Is this you, Harmony? Are you there? <clears throat> yes, I'm, I'm here, Osiphius, yes. Greetings. I was curious right. to know a little I was, did, you get, did you get the whole question or no? I'm sorry. Well, it wasn't a whole question. It was several questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. Yes. All right, let's approach them one at a time. What is your highest one to understand first? Keep it simple. My highest one to understand is what is my resonant, what is my resonant connection to this idea of this golden disc that has been transported from uh, Lake Tikaka to Sedona? That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. My God. Okay. Who cares okay. where it came from? Because there is no air over there. There's always here. All right, those are details that you do not need to dwell upon. What you truly want to know is what is your connection with the golden disk? Is this not true? More yes. so the information that's contained in it. Ah, so in other words, you don't care how it's connected to you? Let's be okay. With uh, you but I do. Yes. I do. Thank I do. You. Yes, I do. Thank you. That is your number one priority because who else is in your world? Nobody. Only you, Harmony. It is your world, and that connection is with you. So understand what it is for you. The information, you know all the information, but if you don't dwell on the fact in this idea that it's a for you, then you don't connect it that much simpler. Booyah. Following? I do. I do. Excellent. All right. And the idea of the why you're connected with it, truly it's because it is a gift to all of humanity. The ones that are perceiving it in their awareness are just tuned into it. Simple as that. And now that you've brought this forth, we give you, let's say, eternal gratitude for this idea. Now that whoever, let's say, these words fall upon now triggers the built-in construct of this, let's say, preordained setup of the golden disk that is now playing out. And now everyone now is connected to it. Excellent. It is for humanity. The information that is stored within that idea is going to be unfolding for each particular idea that connects to it. 
It will contain, let's say, the simple stuff that you all know, hmm? sacred geometry. Let's say probable realities, information of healing, just the idea of the standard close of what's going on in the idea of the ascension. All of that information will be embedded in there and it is easily downloaded just by validating, I want to know what's in it for me. Hmm? What can I get from this? I connect to it, I am it, and here comes the information. It is only you that run interference on what's coming through. Hmm, truly. There is also other ideas of, let's say, we will call them resonance, harmony, vibrations that will trigger portions of your vibrational state within your construct of what you call your vessel, your body, that will accelerate the idea of your DNA enhancements, a lot of you know about that, as well as your present DNA triggerings allowing you to be more, let's say, clear. You're not going to all of a sudden, let's say, be able to be a telekinesis. You're not going to be able to fly because that's not accepted yet in the collective. But your DNA abilities will start to, let's say, start to take form within your reality. You will feel more alive. You will have more thoughts of parallel realities going on because they are triggering the connection of all your probable selves. You're tuned in more to yourselves, past, future, present, probable selves. All of this will be that. There is more, but there is, let's say, not going to, there is more to be discovered within, but those parts will be individualized. For there is information that some will just not understand. It's like speaking a foreign language to a three-year-old who only understands one language. They can't perceive it right away until they get to a certain vibration of these, let's say, languages coming into them that they will start to take notice of them in different ways and start to be able to translate. But most certainly some will get it right away, individualized. How it is related to the idea of Bashar's ship is he pumps energy. All that ship does is just pump energy of love this accelerates it along what you call your ley lines around the world, offering the vibration of the golden disk to those all around the world that will not be noticed through your regular means. Maybe they didn't get to see this channeling or hear about it in the means that you did or anyone else, but they feel it. Listen, I want you all to understand this. I really do. You are not thoughts in the idea of senses. The Let's say the idea of your five senses as your only means of communication. No. You are feeling. It is you that trusts it or not. It is the filter between you and getting feelings that expand into realities of foreverness. So that vibration of this golden disk is in play in play but I dare say that you guys are the masters and you can get all this information through your simple idea of yourself it is only you who do not trust the information that comes in do you say these words to yourself ask yourself this in the mirror entities of ascension is it just my imagination oh yes it is and how perfect that is. Oh, yes. Trust the feelings. What else, Harmony? Thank you. That was very clear. I am curious now. I just have received a download that this, somehow this disk is also connected to the magnetic disks on the moon. I was wondering if you might be able to elaborate that, and then I'll hop out so somebody else can come in. Stand by. Not yet. Let it, let's say, energize within the collective. Remember, <clears throat> when you guys get new vibrations, new higher realities of yourself, if you would, there is an idea of a stabilization that will occur, occur rather in a few nows. Hmm? 
So once this is in play, then we can interject more ideas of what you would call your magnetic disks upon what you call your orbital idea moon. But it will be, but not so much now. For integration must take place. It has to become second nature. It has to be a part of your being. Once enough of the idea of the filters have been dropped among the collective as a whole to bring this vibration as a status quo, then most certainly that connection will be made. But until then, just be now and love it yourself and let's say dwell upon the idea within your reality which will enhance that stabilization among the collective as an acceptable framework. Booyah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elsifius. I appreciate all your answers. On the fucking phone. <laughs> Alex, you came unmuted. Can you remute? Sounds like a puppy dog's a little excited. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting how that. Thank you, works. thank you, Rod. thank you, Osifius. I appreciate that. Um, as you know, I feel very deeply connected to your your frequency, and I appreciate the information that you bring through to all of us all the time. You're most welcome. It is definitely, most certainly, my highest joy. Mm -hmm. Anything specific for me before we go? How are you doing? I'm amazing. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Let me dwell upon you for a few nows. Are you okay with this? Absolutely. All right. The idea of you validating your authority within yourself is given through the construct of what you would call information. In other words, you like to understand that you know information. Your information that you put out is for validation of your own isness. We would want you to understand that you do not need to be in the idea of so knowledgeable in interactions. What does this mean? If you accept your own isness and you are that badass already, then most certainly you will not need to validate within your own self. You count. You matter. You belong. <clears throat> These are already things that you already know. You need not dwell upon them and get the outside approval of how awesome you are. Follow your joy in the moment, Harmony. Be Harmony and allow others to harmonize with you in their own natural way. You count. You belong. For without you, I don't exist. Just understand these words. Make sense? Completely. Completely. Thank you. And we love and thank you. Booyah. Timeless living light to you, my dear friend. And to you. What else we got, Dan? Well, we have uh, member Makiko, if she's ready. Uh, yes. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, I have a question. If I were to modify this repetitive idea, Mm-hmm. Am I still resisting to the idea, meaning that eventually it has to go back to this no. idea? because oh. you're modifying it. Anytime you shift an idea into a new form of the idea, is that yeah. not evolution? Yeah. Mikiko, if she's ready. Why are we getting uh, a feedback? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, I have a question. Are we good now? Yeah, I think so. Go ahead. Makito, are you there? Yes. Realize this. Even if you're repeating entities, an all-encompassing idea here, you are still a new. There is no true repetition. It is only the mind that says you are repeating. And we give you the construct because you are, in a fashion, repeating the idea of what you call repetition from the past. In whatever form it comes, action does not matter. However, it's still new. It's still expansive. 
It still will come to a point to where you will no longer choose it. It may take six months. It may take five years. It matters not. Follow your joy. Be what you want in the moment. And know, and know, and know it's always modified because it's a new you. It's a new now. It's a new idea. Don't chalk it up to resonation of repetition. Know it's new. However, know that there's always a higher vibration available. And that's the exciting part. Don't think for one second that you're missing that vibration. Because you are always, 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 always choosing the best you in all of your nows. That is your best choice. In the very next second, if you say, damn, I could have chosen different. Have you not evolved? Yes. This is why there is no regret of past actions. For without action, there is no idea of the next now. There is no reflection upon the old you to expand from and have the opportunity now to choose different. So know that you are choosing modified in that idea of all of what you call your repetitions. Just realize sometimes you don't need to. But if you do, it's still the best you. Are you following, Mikito? Yes, very much. Thank you so much. Is that all for now? Yes. Booyah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Michelle, are you ready? Yes. Hi, Osipius. Michelle. Greetings, Michelle. What is your hesitation with our interaction? <laughs> uh, I have so much discomfort in my body. Um, I guess uh, I wanted to know if there was a message, but I guess I'll preface it with I've had it a number of um, uh, unpleasant situations arise in the last week um, in addition to feeling completely amazing through the energy of the um, new moon mm -hmm. and the shift like mm -hmm. so it's all been either completely blissful or mm -hmm. completely <laughs> um, I, what I'm what I feel like I'm being shown is that I have the idea down about sending love to it all and loving everything, but that I'm it's not so actually different. capable. Yes, <laughs> you are. All right, let us give you this idea. Listen, entities of ascension, you are a light. Hmm? You are a light bearer. So what you have done is taken this lunar energy this is part of the construct that was built in to shine your light brighter. Hmm. So let's take that for a second. And now I would like you to walk within the addict of your mind. And now you are, a, let's say, a brighter light, are you not? So can you not you see now more things that were hidden from you and limitations? Since now you were, let's say, farther and deeper within the addict of your mind? flashing the light to the corners unseen and now these vibrations are coming up and they're exposing themselves to you in the idea of let's say a negative fashion and you can handle it you just love it for once you understand it that it is love then it will become that in the mirror it's only when you avoid it and get mad at it that you encourage it oh yeah so what you have done, Master, is taken your light, shined it brighter, integrating the lunar idea eclipse, taking those new energies, and let's say coalesce them within. Pumped up your beam and exposed more limitations within your own reality. For there is no other outside reality save that of your own. Period. So you have taken yourself and offered to yourself deeper understandings of limitations of humanity. Not you. You are already ascended up here. But the fractal chose to be limited to heal the limitations for the ascension of the entire species. Mm -hmm. That's what you've done. 
So embrace these ideas of the limitations exposed to you, for now you can heal and offer those ideas to the others to understand themselves. There is nothing that is in your reality that you have not created. The universe has not given these to you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have given them to yourself. You create your universe. The universe doesn't have authority. You are the authority. So when you understand this idea, then you understand that these are there for you. And look at them. Embrace them. Love them. For I dare say you have forgotten the nows. And right now, you're awesome. You have everything you need. Do not think you're supposed to be a minimalist. Do not think or judge where you're at. Be the reality you are in the moment, and that shifts the realities of the nows to come. Oh, yes. So will you have exposed and taken on a greater, a deeper understanding of the elementation because you are once again the master? The sender of a species. Hmm? You have chosen because you are ready. Love and embrace once again what is in your reality. Know that everything is unconditional love, distorted by the human idea of limitation. And you will undistort it by giving it what it is, love. Are you following, baby? Is there a way to do it more comfortably? <laughs> Why? <clears throat> Uh, no, I, I guess I'm shocked in a way. Why? Um, my reaction to things when, like, you think Excellent. you're over them, you think you're over them, and you've passed that point, and uh, they come up, they, and it's really painful. They come up again. <laughs> yes. But know that that is a valued idea. I want to speak upon this idea. We hold treasures as human limitations. Those treasures are our identification. When those treasures of value systems are infringed upon, it causes idealized pain. If it is not valued, then it, let's say, doesn't bother you. It doesn't slight you. You can see this in the reflection every day in the mirror, how some people go from zero to, 60, zero to 60, lose their cool, get pissed off in a moment's notice, and you look at, what the fuck are you so mad at? It's no big deal. But to them, it's their treasure. It's their value. It's their identification. It's their isness. It's what they validated to the world to say, I count. Why is that my problem? I'm talking about you now, darling. Oh, You're no. You're the pain. You're the pain. <laughs> You're feeling pain because whatever is sparking you is challenging what you find valuable in the idea of limitation. And when those things are judged by the idea or slighted by the idea of the outside presenting itself, then you go to the defense. And the defense causes attack. Uh -huh. What you do is know that you have nothing to defend. You are all of it. You are love. You are forever. Just realize these are there for you to, yes, be uncomfortable. Oh, but I promise you, yeah. You will feel it shifting by engaging it. There is a new quality about you that you can understand that I am the isness of this moment. And even though your mind is chalking up ideas to limitations and, let's say, getting mad at yourself, judging yourself, playing off all the future, stop, step back and look at the big picture and say, that's my ego. That's the construct. That's what I'm healing. Thank you for showing. Fill yourself with your own despair, and you will only end up in love. Trust me on this. You chose to be here now to heal the limitations, to wake an entire civilization once again. And you didn't do this on a haphazard idea. No. If you want to put it in terms of times, you're an old soul that played on this planet many, many, many thousands upon thousands of times. 
because you love humanity and you knew that you're going to get into this and you knew that you're ready for this and you knew that you can ascend this oh yes do you have a message for me that could help me yes I love you thank you Sophia yes, I love you that's all you need darling be that thank you you're most welcome Yes, Sipius. I have several questions from several different members, about a half a dozen or so. Mm -hmm. First one from member Shron. She says, first she sends big love to you. She says, mm -hmm. I have a strong connection. She eats everything up. And then she asks, any word on her thought patterns regarding her foot? Stand by. Hmm. In the idea of discomfort <clears throat> in the thought patterns of your foot, let's understand that somewhere within a vibrational hidden construct of, let's say, a negative idea that no longer serves you, and you're not dealing with it, it will manifest itself in one way or another somewhere eventually in the nows in what you call your physical being and that could be mental idea health too most certainly but however this is appear to the idea of let's say discomfort in that fashion what have you recently let's say didn't want to deal with that has kept on coming up dealing with it you won't Manifest That's the question to you, Sharon. Dig deep into yourself and know that you have an idea of something you haven't accepted about yourself. It may be reflected to the idea of another, and you're chalking it up to that's who they are. But you're defining, which is defining yourself, which is harboring the limitation, which is now being exposed in the idea of discomfort. If there is further, further dwellings <coughs> on this, that of Sharon, you may contact Rakia, Roxanne, in whatever way you want to. Skype. Give her a ringy dingy and we'll talk about it. What else? Sorry, juggling buttons here. Juggle away. Um, member Van Laura Light. She mm -hmm. asks how to be more confident and stop comparing herself to others. Mm. Tough one. The idea of confident is action of validation. Once you take an action and it validates itself in the mirror, then your confident builds and comparisons and idealized will diminish. However, here's the trick if you would deem to call it in this now, are your actions your joy? That's it. If you follow your action of joy, your excitement, your slipstream, what the fuck you want to do, that gives you the vibration of your own love. And don't forget the law. What you put out is what you get back. And if you're acting upon your joy, the mirror will reflect that and validate your action for yourself. And then all of a sudden you go, wow, I'm okay with me. I'm pretty awesome. And maybe those ideas of selfish will dawn in on you, rear their ugly head, but it truly is a barren scepter. It is not that of validation. That is a constructive illusion that you guys can't be selfish because you're the only one in your universe, so you can't be selfish. You're allowed to love yourself, darling. You're allowed to choose for yourself your actions 
And when you do that, validates, and then comparison will diminish once again because there is no reason to compare. But you don't see the reason to compare. Right now, you see the idea to compare. And as you choose yourself, you won't see that. It won't be an option because there's no need for that validation anymore within. Your need of validation and comparison in this now is the idea of you wanting to feel better about yourself. So you want to choose you and then you know you're choosing you and that makes you feel better about yourself and you don't need to use the idea of comparison because they're on their journey. Go back to the playground and allow. Sit and eat your popcorn, feed the birds and watch humanity play in the garden of the gods. And look at each idea difference as a celebration of creation. Oh yes. What else, Dan? Alrighty. Um, from member Randy Reinhoff, mm -hmm. she says she got to learn from Takur that she has a hybrid boy mm -hmm. co-arc at Andromeda and I told her that I would give him a name. I've written on a message on the Hukulo site. Don't know if anybody's seen it. But she wants to give the boy the name Sean, uh -huh. and the little girl the name Al Isla, A Y L A, Isla, before uh -huh. she was born. And she'd also like to know if her Yael uh, DNA infusion has started. I will leave that one to the idea of Takur and Gang. Takur, all righty. Mm -hmm. However, Let's... the children's name, listen to me. <clears throat> okay. You can, well, not you, I'm talking to her, but you can listen as well. You're so cute. Okay. <laughs> and the idea that you want to choose those names didn't pop in there haphazardly. If they feel resonance, choose it. If there is a vibration of past history on why you should be naming this or that, then maybe you're distorting it a little bit. The children know their names. We all know our names before we birth. Oh, yes. Hmm? So choose the name you want to choose, and so be it. That is your reality, and all in the mirror of your joy will reflect that reality back to you. Most certainly. Go ahead. All righty. Carolina mm -hmm. would like to know if she's had a DNA infusion, and if you know which one. That may also be a Kerr question, though. There are several Stand DNA on. questions. This one we can shed some light on. Yes is the answer to have you had. What it is cannot be spoken of at this time. All but she, right. has, she has had her infusion, if you will. Okay. And Christine also sends ah, greetings Christine. and love. Yes. Um, she says, does the Cepheus mean that we don't have to ask if our DNA infusions have been downloaded or activated because we'll know, like a previous knowing? Stand by and let me do this right. Boo fucking ya. Perfect. Wonderful. Oh, Shrone there asks is nothing, another. Hang on. There is nothing that you guys don't know in your reality. You always have a vibration of the sense of it. She followed her joy because she said it. She asked the question. She knew the answer. She got validation. But the key here is that she knew it. It is only trust. Validate yourselves, entities. Your fucking God. Go ahead. Um, Shran asks for her mom, Julie, who's watching with her, and asks how her mom can learn to trust herself and listen to herself more. Hmm. Ask herself why, Julie. Ask yourself why you need, let's say, to be the P 
Peacemaker. That was one of your big roles. Ask yourself why, if you followed your joy, what would happen? This is all trustful ideas. Ask yourself why, to yourself, what can I say to myself that allows me to love myself that much more? Can I look in front of the mirror, Julie, and say I love you to myself? Can I look in front of the mirror and ask the mirror, do I trust myself? Look in that mirror, duh, dive, dwell within those eyes. And see the isness that you are. Feel it. And your trust will come about. It is always present at 100%. It is only the filter you put before it that allows you to see how much you trust yourself. This is all we have. All righty. Um, from Alex, who was here, she has uh, two questions. The first question is... she is, on board here? She's not on board here. She fell out, her phone malfunctioned, and now she's watching on uh, the YouTube uh, page. Wonderful. She asks for her friend, William Adley, who she often sees around him a large reptilian, and the others have seen him too, wants to know if you can elaborate on who this reptilian is, if he has a name or anything uh, that would be helpful. The reptilian that. is a probable self. It is a historic incarnation of himself. He has been dwelling within his idea of himself on shifting idea of timelines. He wants to experience different nows from the now he's in, but not be now, be in the avatar mode, if you will, in the other now, and start seeing. He's been making time slippery for himself. So in that idea, he is seeing actually, truly, if you will, him. Himself in that idea. He's taken that probable self of what you call historical past, but it is now, and brought it into his presence. He's not seeing it, though, because he didn't think that was possible. But his other, let's say, telltale clues of his interaction friends say, yes, it's right there. So he's going to look at himself and be himself from that, let's say, that aspect or perspective, either way. So this is the idea that he's given himself. There's always portions about you. There's one law that we validate, is everything is here and now. So if everything is right here, then I have to go nowhere to find everything that is in my reality, in my soul memory complex, in my probabilities of all my now. It is a matter of tuning your radio, fine-tuning it truly, because you're already you, so you're tuned into all of yous. Fine-tuning your idea frequency to appear to you, shift to you, sense to you, present to you, mm, your probable selves. So he is idealized through the conduit, through the permission slip, if you will, that idea of shift time, time shift. And he is doing so, so he's presented himself with an alternate reality to play within. And remember, all of you can zoom out of a timeline, look it back and forth at this big long timeline of history in the future, and then zoom into that now and be that. And whatever comes into your wonderful imagination is valid. Mm. She's, Go ahead. She's asking if... Will he be able to channel this reptilian portion? Will he be able of to course. channel that portion of himself even yes. though it's him? Okay, all right, yes. awesome. Oh, yes. All right. I'm Osithius. I'm Roxanne channeling. Hmm? Right. Roxanne Sylvester. Sylvester's right here. <laughs> That's great. All right, part sure. two, or her next question mm -hmm. is, keys, rocks, and things are constantly disappearing. And she told me this story the other day. She unlocked her car. And then with the same key, got in to start the cart, and then the key was gone. It was just her two fingers there. 
and she mm -hmm. wants to know what's what's this all about with the disappearing things. And then she comments, I know I have learned a great deal when going up on those ships, but when will I learn to bring them down? So she knows that she's teleporting these things out somewhere, but she wants to know how to bring the things back because she needs her stuff. All right. She's not necessarily teleporting them out. She's shifting timelines. When something is there and then it's not there, you've shifted timelines. The reason why she shifted in this one incident about her key disappearing is there was an idea of a probable reality that she didn't need to get there so soon. So she delayed herself. Many times you guys do this because there's something that's not needed in your reality, but your focus is so intentional on being A, B, or C on time that let's say we slow ourselves down to let things play out to give yourselves a higher probability. It is you that are creating your universe. Trust it. There are other things that are disappearing on your reality is to, let's say, give yourself a memory of shifting timelines. And then giving yourself the ability to bring that back and watch yourself shift into a timeline. Many of you have shifted timelines. I swear to God, I looked there a thousand times and it wasn't there. And then poof, there it is. Yes, these are shifting timelines. Next kind of idea. Time is becoming more and more malleable for you guys. Listen, you're allowed to play with it. You don't have a construct of how to play with it yet. You're going to give yourselves cool shit to play with it with, to open up. But now we go back to intention. Don't think on how to do it. Will it by being, and then it'll happen. And you guys will be able to, as Seth speaks of, be your probable selves. Be in the shift, that of William, shifting and seeing himself. All of you have that ability. You're starting to play in deeper sense. But don't look at it from an ego construct and look what I can do. Take it and be yourself. Put it in your heart as your own love and validation of yourself that you have these newfound ideas of abilities. You do not need to shout them upon mountaintop and look what I can do because you will become a preacher and you will bring the naysayers force. And then if you defend your position, you are only enhancing the illusion. So keep these new ideas to yourself until the now is possible. Discover yourself. You don't give yourself the idea of shifting to your probable selves. Be in that moment. Feel everything. Live as if that's your reality. And know that you're also in this timeline. You don't give yourself that unless you're ready for it, unless it's valid, unless it's that freaking awesome, and it has, let's say, now in play. Come forth, more certainly, mo most certainly. Yes. She says that she can't see her future selves, so what's that about? Who cares? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Bingo. Don't Bingo. worry about what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. Be the moment and follow that. There's no reason for a future self until it comes to you and goes, hi. And let me tell you this. Without you in the future, there's no you now. Because you're always creating that now from this now. Oh, yes. So know it's there, in other words. And when it comes, it'll present itself. When it's needed in the idea of expansion. But don't focus in on it and say, I'm missing my future self. I know that they have the answers. No, they don't. You have the answers because everything is here and everything is now. Booyah. Awesomeness. Mm -hmm. All right. Question from member Ladida. Can we ask Osiphius on how to control the fear of natural disasters? Mm. Much, not much appreciated. Uh, namaste. Send my love to him on my behalf. So one thing to know about this fear of stuffs. All right. The idea of natural disasters. Where would the world be without them? Hmm? Look at the landscape and where would it not be without natural disasters? These are all played out ideas of reality of co-creation. Let them happen, for they all chose if they're involved in the idea of a natural disaster. That tsunami in your idea of the Orient 
was most certainly chosen by all to create, to send an everlasting idea message of whatever everyone else in their reality chose it to be. Do not fear natural disasters. They are naturally. They are part of evolution. They are part of changing the landscape of humanity. They all serve a high purpose. Otherwise, they would not be idealized, created in your reality, in the reality of humanity and all those that perceive it. They serve high purposes. Can you imagine if there was no thunderstorms? Do you know how much energy is created in a thunderstorm? But that's not too bad, so it's okay. Hmm? But it is change, it is creating, it is shifting. And at different levels, we do these ideas at different idea. Let's say things, volcanoes, hurricanes. Hmm? Let them play out. Everyone shows. If you had a hurricane, the idea coming up the Florida coast, they chose to live there. That's their joy. Allow them. Let them experience whatever it is. And now let's get to the core point there, darling. There is no fear of death, is there, within you? Hmm? Because when you fear another's death, it is your death you are fearing. What's going to happen when you slip out into the other room? Hmm? Allow all of them to play out their realities. They are energetically co-creating the most beautiful species I have ever experienced. So let them play. And if death is in their reality, so be it. Do not forget you do. And always will have. The eternal respawn button for your gamers out there. You choose every moment of your life. Everything. So fear nothing for them. And fear death not for you either. For it is just a shift a focus. Imagine all of you how humanity truly would be if they did not fear death. Mm. Can you imagine how much you would be alive if you didn't fear dying? You don't want to come into the funeral home all clean and pristine. Come in dirty, scarred, battered, and spent. That's life. Live it. Okay. I have one more question here before we come back to the live room. Mm -hmm. From member Iron. Hello. Wanted to ask what is the meaning of the upside down pentagram? throughout history that is now used in Satanism and how can we make the symbol positive again or unusable for negative entities? It's not, let's say, your job to make it positive until you view it in your world as positive and then it becomes positive and you have no job to do it. Let me dwell on this. <clears throat> You're symbolizing this idea of a pentagram and validating by your definition of what it means to the collective. They calling it. So when you see it, it comes into your awareness and you define it as that and what you need to do about it, then you're only enhancing it and then all of a sudden you're putting up a structure we need to do something and which is your focus and that's fine if you will choose to do that. But that symbol is so old, it is unbelievable how many times that idea has been used for thousands of different definitions on thousands of collapsed timelines and the thousands of different Earths all over your reality. But you're defining it as A. Define it as love. Pay it no ill will, pay it no idea energy. For if you feed the hungry lion, the hungry lion stays around. This is a deeper sense for you. We can give you other ideas on how to handle it and what to do, but not you. No, you're ready for this. Don't validate what you don't idealize anymore as truth. When it comes into your awareness, say thank you, awesome. Let's say, however, I no longer prefer it and go about your house. 
But don't go to a person that is validating that idea and preach to them. Don't fix what's not broken. For if you remember humanity another lifetime in the past, you will see many validations of things of, let's say, horrible nature or defining idea of negativity that are no longer even thought of. For they always take care of themselves in the perfect now because there's no more energy feeding it. If there is no more energy of idealizing within the construct of the framework, it disappears because everything is an idea. There's no solid ideas. There's no ideas of realness. Real is what you validate. So you validate that and it becomes in your fractalized world, your bubble reality. When we let go of the idea and that movement of energy away from that lessens it. And you've shifted to your reality to expand your world. Trust me, you're on this entity. Excellent work. This is all. Thank you, Osipius. Uh, remember, momentum is up if he is ready. Mm -hmm. Hey, Big O. What up? I uh, just wanted to ask, which Oversoul Collective do I belong to? Goodness. Hmm. The, reason, the reason why we say goodness is you're part of a very masterful idea. Very honored to co-create with this idea of the Oversoul. Let's say that it's called the Centurion Oversoul. That's a good validation for you to understand that. Thank you. For now, you are feeling something about yourself when I just gave you that nice little word, Centurion. Sparking yes. realities, memories, I should say. Yes? Yes. Booyah. I would like to say thank you as well for all your messages and always being on the ball and... The last question I have, if any, is mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin. Now, in this reality that I am sharing, co-creating, yes, he seems to be what I see now as a freedom fighter for humanity against what the idea of those who would suppress us, if that is even what I can say. But he seems yes. to be uh, what is your question about him? I just want to know your take and that of the collective on Vladimir Putin and how he's going about with his um, challenging the powers that be. Yes. And, yeah. That was the key idea right there. An entity that chose a probable reality of, let's say, a field of probable realities followed this timeline to be what he is in this co-created humanity idea reality of the definition of that idea of Vladimir. So he has taken the idea and you said the key word once again, challenge those ideas of authority. He's a, yeah. let's say, he's a monkey wrench in the works. Hmm. They didn't quite see him coming in the validation that he's been getting, which is awesome. So, however, no, let's say this. So now, let him play out the way he does. Don't be quick to judge because you carry and validate a certain flag above your head that would be in conflict with the idea of this idea entity he speaks of. For then you are only validating your own separation of your island, the flag that you bear. So in that idea, look at the construct of this, if this is your intrigue, and watch it play out. Energize it and love it. For this is a big, big, big part of the shift. That idea, the idea of disclosure. Yes. 2016 coming about. Yes. There's going to be so much shit on the plate. <laughs> it's going to, let's say... Keep everyone jumping from one hoop to the other. And in the idea of the awake world, you're sitting back enjoying the show. 
Oh, yes. For it is time for you guys to, let's say, enjoy the fruits of your labor. Truly. I really resonate with that and connect with that. And I look forward to talking to Roxy after this about something to do with Centurions. Yes. We can Thank dwell on that. Yes. She has, let's say, a lot of downloads on the Centurion Oversoul. Very good idea. And what construct. So, yeah, whenever you feel the time, we shall do so. Thank you, Big O. You're welcome. Chris, are you nearby for your question? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm here. Uh, just first of all, I just want to say hello to everyone, and especially Asifius. And I just have uh, two quick questions, uh, kind of about myself. I was wondering, mm -hmm. one, one being a uh, symbol that I had seen. Uh, it was it was somewhat like a uh, hollowed out soccer ball, and it had like blue edges, and then there was mm -hmm. like a triangle on the inside that had like a swirling of red, blues, and greens, and it was mm -hmm. all turning. Is nobody's been able to tell me what this is? Do you do you know? Yes, I do. And before we get to it, I would like to, let's say, give you a perspective I just saw about yourself. Okay. Don't worry about quick questions about yourself. No question needs to be quick. You're not wasting my time. I'm honored to co-create with you. So slow down to speed up. It's okay. Make sense, darling? Very much. <laughs> Booyah. All right, you're seeing a pattern of what you call a geometric sacred geometry idea, a soccer ball, or you experience the idea of pentagrams, like a, the idea of what you would call the mm. five-sided triangles in the soccer ball idea, or are you getting the hexagon idea? Um, it was just one triangle, and uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it was three-sided or four-sided. Um, my interpretation was something with the universe, but I, I have no clue. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Are you getting this in dream state, or are you getting it in like a No, wake? no, no. I've only had it twice, but it was very uh, vivid and uh, mm -hmm. just something I've pondered about. Okay. Now we're honed in on the timeline that you got it on. Let's say this. <clears throat> it is a form of a, let's say, message, if you will. The idea of what you would call sacred geometry, and it is most certainly in what you call your, pentag let's say, pentagram idea. Five-sided making up the whole idea of a round ball that will transmute into what you call a triangle, the most stable idea of all the ideas in what you call geometry, the most solid. So within that, the streaming lights are energetic fields of understanding, energetic fields of ideas. These ideas will, let's say, if you accept them, shift you. These shiftings will be uncomfortable because you want to find another portion of you that is, let's say, playing out another probable self. That probable self is now asking for your help. This is the message to yourself through this idea of a wonderment. The construct of the idea probable self only understands a deep sense of logic, a mathematician, a brilliant mind that's living on a probable reality over there that is trying to find an answer within. But the answer is cannot be found in the resonation of this framework of this entity, and that resonation is reason. For intuition is child's play to this idea fractal. The intuition of spirituality plays no game because everything is fact and proven. And it's finding things that just don't make sense. It's doing validations to itself that has something to do beyond the idea of logic. So it's asking you to connect to yourself in that probable self. And that's the construct, the definition, the way it can be of geometry, of mathematics, which is you, so you have access, and you most certainly can translate it. But you're awake. And when you get to the edge of reason, and there's nowhere else to go, that of Nassim, 
you start to go into spirituality. Mm. And that's you answering the call. Following? Oh, yes. Excited. <laughs> Excellent. I just ha I have one more uh, if you're ready for it. Most certainly. Okay. Uh, first, I want to say uh, with Michelle, I, I agree with uh, what she's going through with the struggles and stuff because mm -hmm. I myself am going through that and I can relate with her. So uh, what you had spoke on on that you know, resonated with me. But uh, another thing that has really impacted well, me. Well, time. Oh. Okay. Before we go on, let me ask you this. Sure. Would there maybe be an opportunity for you and Michelle to dwell together upon your own idea yeah, and give we, each other already, comfort yeah, and validation? Yeah, we set that up right before this uh, webinar. So. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't know if you played it out. Now I know. Excellent. Move on. Okay. Uh, I guess you could say at the beginning of all of this, my awakening, whatever, I had a... Uh, experience with a spiral, a white spiral, and I think it was going left. Could you tell me uh, the symbolism of the spiral and then maybe explain what that was that I was experiencing? Expansion. Listen, you all are a center point and you all have seen the vortices, the vortexes of the spiral going up and down and left and right. And that idea was you tuning into ideas of expansion over here, and you represent it to yourself as a spiral. And all of you are always going up. There's no going back down. Truly. Period. Enough said. So what you were doing is seeing the idea of a spiral going up. You may look down at a past self, but truly, you're always higher in the next idea shift. The spirals to the left and right are more conducive to what you would call humanity energetic levels. The construct of the illusion. The one below is your energetic honing into the Gaia, the earth, the grounding, the idea of where you were birthed from. Mm. So when that idea going up would be the idea of the purple ray, infinite intelligence, all that is that awaits you, and it's only you that choose when you're ready. So understand the humanity idea that you saw on the left was a construct of what you would call the vibrations of limitation. So those vibrations of limitations were flowing in and out. These go here. This goes here. The energies go up and down, but you don't go up and down. You are solid still in isness, and they flow through you. So that idea of that white light is what you can perceive, but truly it is a rainbow. A rainbow of colors that you all don't know yet. You only know your rainbow, but there are more vibrations and more colors unperceived. But you will tell in time. Make sense? Very much so. <clears throat> that That's it for me. I uh, just want to say thank you, and uh, uh, that's it. And most much, certainly. Love, much love. You're welcome, and let's say thank you. <laughs> Booyah. Hello, you ready? Yes. Okay, at first I thought I wanted to ask for a message for my daughter, Brooke because I think she needs the encouragement, uh, but in a really uh, super codependent way. Because <laughs> I want her to be okay so I can do what I want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Booyah. How the shift happens in the nows when you get out of your way. Excellent work, Michelle. <laughs> but I still would like so, some encouragement for that. And also, what I would like to know... How long do I have to play? How long? Oh, I, cho I chose. I chose this. I understand. I chose to be here now in this situation. Yes. But like, I want to go to an ashram. You know, like I just want to go do something else. Like, All right. <laughs> time stop. Let me finish with Brooke's idea. Okay. Brooke is a let's say a rock star. Let her be the rock star that she wants to be. Hmm. Well, Just let her, let her be. You don't want? I don't want her to not be a rock star. I okay, think then, sometimes then she doubts she, her. I th doubts let her doubt. Love okay. her. 
Encourage her. Okay. Water the foundation of her own love with your love. Make sense? Yes. Every seed knows it's a flower or a tree or whatever it's going to grow into. It doesn't need anyone's help, including yourself, to yourself. In other words, I'm the seed and I can flower on my own. I don't need to get in my own way. I already know the beginning and I already know the end of that idea. Mm -hmm. Let Brooke be the idea of herself. Mm -hmm. Let her rock and roll. Let her be that idea, living on the edge, the cusp. Let her take chances. Skinner heart, Skinner knees idea. I love that song. Make sense? Okay. Go ahead. But I feel like I'm in charge of her. Why? Like I have to take care of her. Because you're defining your validation, listen now, of a definition. Are you, let me ask you, are you her mother? I am. Perfect. What definition says that? I need to be this protector, doesn't it? Yes. I need to do this and do that. And no. You need to offer and allow. Offer and allow. Lovely, Brooke. However, I don't see it this way. Here's what I feel. And that's it. And if she doesn't accept your reality, are you thwarted? Are you slighted? Is she wrong for not accepting your own self of validation? Because you're trying to help and she's not validating your help, so you feel what? Trapped. <laughs> Not trapped. <laughs> Valued system, once again, of what's supposed to be validated with you. Listen, let you be God. Let her be God in your own mysterious ways. You do not need to protect this child. Everyone out there, in the idea of parenting, you can protect in the idea of safe harbor that you feel, but you can also, oh yes, overprotect. Right, which I don't want to do. Then don't. Know when you do it. Okay. I would suggest listening to the Pink Floyd song, Mother. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> what else? Um, I think I just wanted to know, how do I know when... I am ready to move on. And when you it's always okay. know. Listen, once again, I will tell you this. You do not need an outside validation to let you know. Okay. There is no rule book. There is no comparison book. There is only your book of your own discernment. When you know you're ready to move, move. Don't look for it. Because right now your mind says, well, if I don't do it right, I missed something. No, you didn't. You're always acting on the best self of yourself in the moment. So when I'm ready to move on, I move on. And then it comes back again, and here it is again. But it's still a new you, and it's still a new vibration, and it's still new now. So you look at that and love it the way you choose to. And you will get better, but every time you don't act upon your joy, your idea of what you want to be, then you hesitate. You're paralyzed because you're looking for someone else to tell you it's okay. I know that you're God. I know you're a, your own authority. It is you that needs to make the choice to know that within, that you can do whatever the fuck you want to. Choose your reality how you want to. Live. Live your life. Don't worry about outside. Don't be the idea of an image to others. For those who are lost in journeying God's home, represent what everyone has forgotten yourself to the best of your ability. Every now, choose you, and you will only validate yourself as you go. You will get that validation back in the mirror, back in the mirror, giving you confidence, giving you abilities beyond yourself giving you the divine nonchalance to walk through the reality of your own bubble and know that you own it because it is you. So you're always choosing correctly and you do not need me or anyone else to tell you you are. You're ascending. Be that ascension in whatever way you choose. Thank you. Much love. Much love. Bianca, are you ready? Yes. 
Hi. How? Greetings, Bianca. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you for all. Thank you to you and Roxanne for all the videos you guys have done. They have helped me a lot and helped open my mind a lot. And I'm beautiful. I'm very grateful for that. And even in this web webinar right now, I mean, I've had everybody's questions seem to be what I've had in my mind, and you've answered a lot of my questions without me having to directly ask you. Excellent. Yeah. Hmm. Um, um, now, I just wanted to ask about a group I'm a part of. It's called the Wanderer Group. I wanted to know if there's any, well, we wanted to know if there's any messages or anything we should know about it. What do you define yourself as the Wanderer Group? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just uh, relaying. You just are a group of people that you destroyed, and the name is called the Wanderers. Do you know what that is? No, I don't, actually. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you? Yes. From our perspective of all the higher selves that I'm communicating with that belong to the idea of the group, and there are many of you, and we've said this before, there are many wanderers upon the earth, spoken first by that of your, let's say, Overzo Collective Ra, back in your earlier time. The idea of wanderers, once again, is an entity that has experienced a full idea cycle of a particular density and moved and graduated on. However, chooses to come back through and experience it again as a wanderer. I am not lost. I'm just wandering back down through my, let's say, densities to help co-create that of humanity. The idea of most wanderers are experiencing themselves in the oversoul idea as a, let's say, fifth density incarnation, a seventh density idea oversoul. So, in other words, you graduated from what you call, and the graduation is your own graduation when you're all are ready. There is no book on when you're ready. There's no test on when you're ready. It is all free will choice. So you've already graduated in the idea of third density and fourth density. You spent about 33 million years in fourth density, so you're well versed in that. So in the idea of fifth density, you were, let's say, called upon. There's about 81 million of you right now. 81 million wanderers that were called upon to, let's say, come forth into humanity and awaken almost effortlessly when the right trigger was in place and you are awakened. You are a wanderer. You took your fifth density fractal, I'll be back, move down through fourth, move down through third, vibrated in this frequency to relate to the reality of humanity, co-created in that idea, found a group called the Wanderer so you can have this experience of this now. What is defined by the other group members need not concern of yours. You are your own validation through this idea of me. I'm telling you what you, higher self, wants to give you. It mm -hmm. is now up to you, the fractal idea, to accept and choose what you get. Booyah. How's that? That's awesome. That's excellent. Perfect. Good shit. <laughs> yeah. Booyah. Well, um, Wendy Wolf. Wanted to know if there's any messages for her, and also want to know if there's any other messages for me. Mm. In the idea of Wendy, <laughs> WW we call her, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of Wendy's, so we call her WW. <laughs> Stand by. Mm -hmm. And the idea of Wendy, <clears throat> there is not much to, let's say, message you about. For about you is realities of messaging all the time. Once again, it is only tuning into the aspect of what is, let's say, conceivable and acceptable within your construct of your own allowance, period. So we would say to that of WW, no, we have nothing major to say. However, there is an interaction we would like you to take notice of already been perceived in many dream states of yourself. 
those dream states are giving you the clue to what's coming in a 3D physical reality. It is most exciting for you. And you will notice it. Look for the white daisy and follow it. That is all we have for her. What else? Um, any messages? messages for you? Yes. What do you want to tell yourself? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, um. Well, I probably just answered my own question to myself then. <laughs> well, you always do. Yeah. Yes. You know the message for yourself. I can give it to you in validation, but I know you don't need it. Yeah. I will always give you the, your authority. I will let you experience yourself, choose and trust your own isness. For the more of you remember that you are the presence of creation in all the nows, and you are part of the entire collective of all that is, and you were chosen to exist by creativity, therefore you are blessed forever then I will only enhance that validation through me to you to have you choose your own isness. And as these gods keep choosing your own isness, I dare say the acceleration of the ascension occurs. Beautiful. Good job, darling. Well, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're most welcome. No, huh? Are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you. Sifius, hi again. Yes, hello uh, again. Yes, my inquiry is about also any messages for me regarding uh, channeling. I feel I'm quite close. Quite close. Don't tell me you answered your question. <laughs> you, you feel what? I'm close to channeling. Yes. So am I? Well, yes. All right. Let us give you perspectives. Let's say there's not enough channelers on Earth. You got 8 billion people, and they keep saving 7, but it's more like 8.1 billion. People that are idealized upon Earth. You have X amount that's awake, X amount that's kind of awake. The need, if you want to put it in that way, the demand, if you want to put it in that limiting fashion, for channelers is extremely high. And if you feel you're a channeler, choose it. Because there's a lot of people to talk to. And we want to be able to bring the acceptable permission slip of channeling to the mass awareness. The more validate any idea, there's comfort in numbers. The more validate any idea well, among the collective as okay, the more of the collective accepts it. So if there's more channelers, then there will certainly be more opportunities for it to awaken the idea of the asleep. Because the information that comes through the idea of the channelers is beyond reason of any extraordinary human being. Which only offers those naysayers and doubters of their own reality to question their own self within. How can this idea before me be such an idea of greatness when I know that the reason doesn't fit? And that questions their own reality and offers the idea of light within themselves. So the channelers are doing an exponential service. And now here's the question to you, Noah. Can you validate your own information that you're channeling? Are you afraid of what you're going to spit out in that fashion is not going to be validated among your collective? No, no, but no you're, I'm not. Then channel. I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm a blunt person in my, in my being. So that's easy for me. But you're I'm not feeling, afraid. No, not I want you to stop and step back and let's look at the big picture here. Why haven't you channeled then? I don't know. My mouth doesn't want to open. I feel like Your excitement. mouth doesn't want to open. Yeah. Your I mouth like is running right now. I can feel and hear you speaking. I speak naturally, but the channeling part, you know, it's there. Oh, so now channeling there. is unnatural. 
Yeah, I suppose so. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. Because you're defining it. Yes. Look at the fight you're doing. You are I... leading a great fight for yourself. Oh, Keep shoot. defending your limitations. Booyah. No, uh, uh, Sophia's, I feel excitement in my mouth, you know what I then mean? Then do like it. Something, something's happening, you know? Then do it. Right now. I'm going to shut up now and allow you to channel. Go. So, how shall I do it? Shall I close my eyes? It doesn't matter. This is your rodeo. There is yeah. only you here. You are creating me in your reality. Channel. I'm telling you, it's something juicy in my mouth, really. Then keep speaking. This is how Roxy started. You ready? Okay, I want to be a channel. I don't know what the fuck to say. But I'm just going to talk and let me see what comes out. Oh, who are you? Who am I? I'm you. Who is that? That is me. I am Hugh. Who are you, Hugh? Hugh is an idea of you to teach you how to channel. So what are you going to say? It doesn't really matter as long as we get going so we can understand the vibration of actually channeling. So, so start, saying, darling, do the is dialogue. what we're telling you. Do start. The dialogue. Don't worry. Go. Okay, you'll know the difference, of course. You know the difference, of course. Not me. I'm not here. <laughs> Goodness me, I'm on the spot right now. Goodness. Yes, there is no fear. There is only love no, in no, this no, room. No fear. But, then you know, speak your joy. Okay, I'm going back to the what he started first. He said, okay, the intention is there and the will. So, let's get up. Uh, you must talk to me. I don't know why. Asifis, you... Uh, okay, talk to me. What would you like me to say? No, yeah. Do the dialogue with me. Let me ask you this question. What are the words in your head, and who are they coming from? So far, for myself. Okay. So accept yourself as a channel. What do you want to say? Well, I like to express my love and gratitude. I feel quite whole, oh, you know what I mean? Very in the, in the zone of, uh, you know, in the zone of ascension, of love, of oneness. In this area, I feel myself. Yes. I feel excitement in the air. There's something juicy there, you know. Stop tickling the outskirts and dive into it. <laughs> I'm getting ticklish myself. Um, I feel that something is getting is going on. Something is happening, and something is going to pop up. Something is going to pop up in the horizon. It is you that are going to choose when you are ready to choose the channel. You have everything juicy as you're describing it waiting to be brought forth by you. And please do not think for one second that you are not fearing. I am. Yes, darling. The first time, first time. Meeting. Yes, and that's okay. It starts with a step of acting on it. Okay. If you want to take the idea of a recorded session amongst yourself, then okay. do that. And those yeah. words that are spoken will validate that you are going beyond your memory, going beyond what you understand as reason of logic. And then you will be in the state of allowing the infinite intelligence to flow through you to be the conduit of that of what you want to offer to those vibrations around you who choose to co-create with you the excellent information you were bringing forward. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I think my mind is, uh, is penetrating. It's, it's blocking me with something. Yes. It's called yeah. fear. Oh, still? Oh, yes. But I don't have fear. I don't have fear. Um, okay. You know, I speak in front of everybody. Yeah, no, no fear. I don't fear the audience, you know? 
So, I don't know, maybe the fear of am I right or I'm not right, you know what I mean? Bingo. Yeah. Dig into yourself. This is ascension. This is validation. This is journeying within. Am I going to be accepted? Am I going to say the right thing? Am I, am I, am I, am I? Who are you looking to get the approval from? Myself. Bingo. So assert yourself. Be the discernment of yourself. Give yourself back your isness and say, you know what? I'm a channel. I'm a channel. And channel. Yes, I am. You know, uh, nowadays I'm not asking so much questions on the webinars. I see, I feel like uh, I'm getting some insights. No, uh, getting well, of some answers. You are. So because let me tell I'm, you this. Yeah. You wrote these seminars. You wrote the webinars. You wrote every test in your life. You wrote anything that's coming in the now already. So when now when you're turning in, you don't need to ask questions because you're already tuning into your own answers. Right. Yes. Excellent. Right. Another question that I have to ask a person. Uh, some time back, I've lost that tennis bracelet, and I feel I'm going to find it. It's been lost maybe at the beginning of the year or something. Till today, I didn't find it. But I have this feeling that I'm going to find it. So is it in our dimension, or is it gone to a different dimension? There is no different dimension. Uh, unless you choose it to be a different dimension. Why are you taking some answer and putting it over there and giving yourself a journey before you to get to over there or bring it back here when it's always here and now? When it comes, ah, uh, ah, uh, stop fighting. Okay. When it's ready to come, it will present itself. Otherwise, let it the fuck go, because it matters okay. not until it shows it. This is why you guys harbor on such things of the past that have nothing to do with the price of fish in China right now. Let it go. When it presents itself through the effortless God that you are, it will always be that moment of it. Let's say, aha. But until then, go about your nows, darling. Dwell upon nothing that you think you're missing. Okay, I get you now. Because I heard Booyah. it somewhere. I heard it somewhere. Channels are saying it's gone somewhere, a different dimension. But in my in my own being, I I have a, I have a knowing that it's gonna pop up. Then let it Sorry. then let it pop up. Let it so get it, out of your I, way. Stop running yes. interference on yourself and let it pop up in the now that it's going to. Okay, so then when that idea comes into my mind, I just exclude it and go to the positive one. Stick to the positive idea. Bingo. That one is the mind. Right, okay, I got it now. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Well, appreciate You're most welcome. It. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Booyah. How are we on time, Dan? We are good. I have three more questions, and then we can do a blessing, if that's okay, if you've got the time for that. Oh, yes. Awesome. Um... First first thing is from uh, Carolina. She has uh -huh. a question here. She was hearing a deep vibration. I'm guessing uh -huh. this was in her home. She was hearing a deep vibration, and then a pigeon crashed next to her window and died. She wants to know uh -huh. what that was all about. I guess she's asking if there's a relationship between the pigeon and the vibration. Oh, most certainly. The idea of the magnetic shift that occurred, kind of like messed up Mr. Idealized Pigeon's honing skills, and it was disoriented, much like you've seen in the movie The Core, when there was a magnetic shift, and what would happen with the idea of birds, as well as many honed-in magnetic, let's say, built-in construct second D beings. So the pigeon got disoriented and whacked into the window, so you could have this idea now co-created. Don't worry, the pigeon didn't sacrifice himself, the pigeon chose to die. So in that fashion we are in this now experience the idea of this deep fair vibration, a magnetic shift if you will, in what you call your portal of reality. That idea of magnetic shift, we're not going to give you all of the encompassing ideas of it, for since let's say you took notice of it then you're well aware. So in that idea, that's what it was. What it's going to do for you is a matter of tuning in. Booyah. Awesome. We have member uh, Shanman Nolagal. He says, I have seen too many magic to write. The past seven years of waking, he's seen ships, lights, angels, and phoenix 
above both day and night. It says his dreams are more real than awake, and he remembers them from years ago as if he has just dreamed them. Uh -huh. He said timeline shifts and people who die over and over. He Excellent. says, I'm on a path of waking and also know that a game called the Babylon is over. Yes. Uh, I guess he's trying to state that he's having these really interesting experiences, but he's looking for uh, some validation on some of these things. Well, let's put it this way. He is spending more time in what you call the true awake state. Remember, guys, you never truly sleep. You give yourself the illusion of sleeping. So in that idea, he has, let's say, allowed himself through his many, 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 many cycled lifetimes to hurriedly awaken in this idea, this incarnation, as well as have these huge amount of downloads. And those downloads are remembrances, and he is truly shifting because he's spending more time up there as an awake being. He's taken lucid to the idea of vibrational relationship of validity that he is, which he is, experiencing those realities. So the only validation he needs is for me to say, yes, you are over there in the idea of the illusion of you're leaving this body, going up there to that reality, when truly it's just here and now. But you are giving yourself, and it's not just a lucid dream. It's not just imagination in that discounted way. It is you being on those other selves. You are shifting to your probable selves 100%. <coughs> Be that. Use these skills. Hone your skills. Gather your information. Get your remembrance and full in play. And when although you are quite discouraged with it, you choose to come back to wake up in what you call from your dream slumber here, being an awake human walking around in 3D. When you do do that, take the lesson areas that you have learned and offer those to the collective on the ones that are vibrating into your reality in your next nows who are ready to hear this information. Once again, don't be the preacher be the idea of the awakener. Booyah. Okay, it seems I have skipped a question here. I need to go back a step. Uh, this is for member Barbara. So asking for clarification, she says, I occasionally ask my questions to my higher self by muscle testing before I ask my question, I ask Jesus for protection to only bring forward my higher self and keep away negative entities. Then I ask, is such and such going to happen today? And I would get an affirmative answer. What I ask about did not come to pass. So did, so I, so did I ask for protection incorrectly or did I ask the question correctly? She sends all right. thanks. Stand by. <clears throat> and greetings to that of the collective. This is Palia from what you would understand as the Essasani civilization. We're going to give you this idea in the construct of what you would understand as your own limitations. All of that event that you just had mentioned in the past is leading to this moment for you to understand a new perspective of yourself. You are validating the permission slip. You are validating the tool of Jesus being the protector against the idea of what you would call the idea of negative energies. I'd like you to stop and look at the big picture here. Step back and notice something. You're validating protection, A. You're validating negative vibrations, B. I would want you to ask yourself this question. Is there anyone in your reality that has infringement upon free will? I dare say fuck no. Everything in your reality is a choice. Everything in your reality is co-creation. Everything in your reality you are well or well of. Well aware of. So we would like you to ask yourself this question. Do you need protection anymore? If the answer is yes, then you are still playing the, per, let's say, permission slip of protection. 
That permission slip of protection validates and only continues the idea of needing protection against other ideas of negative energy. Is everybody negative? No. Is everybody love? Yes. When you start taking your idea and not validating that you are God and not validating the idea of needing protection and not validating the idea of negative energies, then you shall no longer get the idea of those in your reality because they cannot vibrate what you're not choosing. There's no boogeyman to come in. There's no one behind the mirror. There's no one saying you have to do this or that. It is all you. Truly, Polita wanted to answer this question to stretch her what you would call channeling ideas, and she hasn't come in in a few now. But the answer idea is most valid. The idea of you saying that Jesus has more authority for protection than you. It is a construct. It is allowable. It is choice. It is beautiful. But truly, it is a permission slip that you need no longer choose. Does anyone here validate Jesus as higher than you? Does he have a leg up up there? Does he have bigger kudos? Is he getting more attention because he awoken? The validation of the definition of Jesus is what keeps you in the construct of that entity who is equal to every single one of you. Jesus served his purpose and is, let's say, most gracious he got to experience himself in that aspect. But truly, there were many Jesuses. Many that were never noticed by what you call the collective and acceptable idea of the Christ conscience. I would dare say you don't need the idea anymore to be protected when you're talking to your higher self because it's only you and your reality and it is only your distortions of definition that say someone else is allowed to come in and give you false information. Validate your own self, child. Take your own isness and know that you are the Christ conscience. You are equal. You have everything in you that gives you the, quote, protection you seek. For there is no other except you. <clears throat> what else, Dan? Just two last things. Um, mm -hmm. The next one would be um, Johannes's mother. Uh, He's asking if there's any messages for her. Her name is May Louise. Johannes, this message is actually for you. What is your hesitation to tell her the messages you want to tell her? Truly. Her messages are your messages, for you guys are integral. More integral than what you're allowed by definitions of mother, daughter, father, son, mother, son. Mm -hmm. those defining definitions would scare the crap out of you if you knew your mother was your lover in the last lifetime. It's kind of creepy. But truly, you guys have been integrated so much. You know her as well as you know yourself. And Johannes is the idea of a conduit for her to give herself messages through you. So the message is truly you messaging yourself to message her with the thoughts that you have. Take the definition of the relationship of mother away. See it as God. Stand by. See it as God in front of the mirror. And be that God to God relationship. Sounds like Oppo wants to go out. That's the cat. Go ahead. Um, just the last item um, from member Casey, Casey Cruz, wants to know if you have any messages um, for her from you or her higher self. Yes.
that of Casey. <clears throat> this is a logical portion of yourself, and I want to give you this idea. Most, let's say, opportune. Wasn't really sure this was going to play out until the now showed up. How awesome. I'm an aspect of you from a, let's say, a future self. One of wisdom. One of wisdom and compassion. The idea of wisdom is an understanding of coalescing experience. The understanding of compassion is the idea of coalescing the idea of others' experience. And seeing that outward reach of that love being, let's say, integrated in what you would call harmony within yourself, playing your harp of life. Truly a symphony. So in that idea, we would like to give you this message, if you will, Casey. Understand within your own dwellings, your own rattlings in your brain, the things that go bump in the night of fear with yourself. Those ideas vex you in that fashion. They harbor you and they call upon you and they cause you to shut the door on this unforeseen reality. This unforeseen reality is an incident that has shut you down to that portion of yourself. Is there a cat in here? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Taking that unportioned, realized portion of yourself, un, let's say realized portion of yourself sounds better, yeah. There's a triggering event I would like you to remember. This will open the door and allow you to accept it. You have ticklings of it. You have remembrances of it, but you don't really want to play within that, so you just kind of walk by that storefront along this, let's say, field of storefronts to go in and go shopping. But you keep walking by this one because it scares you, because it doesn't look like the window dressing is appeasing to your eyes, so you just skirt them and walk by. So we want you to take the incidents of a Christmas. And now you have it. So take that, that Christmas moment and let it expand upon themselves. There was a dissertation of an explanation that you found, let's say, that you found very uncomfortable. But the authoritative figure that gave you this dissertation of an explanation was that of a relationship idea to obligation. So when that door was shut, it was sealed, and now it's being opened again. And we want you to go in there. And you call upon this voice that you hear, this vibration, this tone, this remembrance, and I am a future you. And I am that of compassion, and I am that of wisdom. So I would like you to call upon me. And I want you to, let's say, have me hold your hand while we journey through this idea together. You can call me a guide, but I'm you. Whatever construct makes it permissionable for you to move forward on this idea so you can open that, let's say, sealed door once again. Don't be afraid what's on the other side. No, 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 no. Just call on me. Just call me Alex. I like that name. It's not my name, but it's peaceable. My name and your name will become one name, and you'll understand what my name is, but just call me in this vibration as Alex, and then we'll move forward. And Alex has pertinence to you, so you understand that as well. I await your call, darling. All right, Dan, we're back. Thank you so much. Um, we are wrapped up for now. We can bring Roger Excellent. back in unless you have some final words you'd like to impart upon the group. Mm. There's no true final words I have in this idea. Just whenever you understand this, the messages that you've given, that were given, and received in those ideas. 
understand that you can go back and dwell upon these in the videotapes and everything that you have and need is always in the now. Excellent. So, I will depart and bring that of Roxanne back, for she does have to most certainly go tinkle. I bid you all a good day. Eternal love, Adonai. Hi guys. Hello, welcome back. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank you Ooh. so much. That Big was thank really you. good. Wow, Roxy. <laughs> wow, what a day. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, Karen's here. Hi, Karen. Yeah, Karen. Hi, how you. are you? Hi. I snuck in about the second hour, so yay. You big sneaker. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna turn off my camera and take me off presenting real quick, and then we'll do a blessing. But I need, really need to go to the TT. Yes, go first. Go run. All right. Okay. You're you all presenting. There you go. Now we are normal, or somewhat normal. Yes. All right. Are we gonna wait for Roxy to come back, or are we just? Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead and... She. Yeah. She wants okay. to wait, so we'll wait for her. Wow. It was really mm. great. I, I know. I know I got a lot of my questions answered that I didn't even ask. So. Yeah, I, I tried to do better with the questions today. I actually tried to get through them. I got through all but I think one or two that, that came a little after the, uh, the cutoff spot there, but uh, got almost all of them in. So oh, you did great. You, you did great, Dan. It was a good pace and everything, and uh, we appreciate all your time and effort and watching all the questions and Trying you to know, get everyone, everyone included. While we're waiting, let me do some announcements real quick. I'd like to announce again the uh, the Reiki uh, class that uh, Jim and Max are putting on. Uh, the two dates that are given are October 19th and October 26th from 2 to 6 p.m. I believe that's Eastern time. Um, that people can uh, sign up on the page called Reiki on the humancolony.org uh, site and that Jim accepts uh, signups at re Reiki at humancolony.org email so people who are interested in the uh, the galactic uh, Reiki course please uh, please look up those those two things and then the other announcements uh, we have the guided meditation tomorrow at um, 4 p.m. Eastern. It'll be guided by Sabrina this week. We cool. have a uh, uh, Galactic Language Hangout on October 6th, Tuesday at noon. It's scheduled. We have the San Antonio, Texas Meetup with Roxy next weekend. Be there or be square. <laughs> and that's all I have for that. Unless, Wendy, would you like to... Oh, we have Sarah's Hangout on Friday. Wendy, are you still doing your reading? Um, thing. Yes, I've been well. I've been actually kind of working it right now. I've been working it around Sarah and Harris's schedule that, since they're in Ireland. So we've been I've been trying to work it around their schedule because our time difference. So it's kind of a, a hit and miss while she's in Ireland. So I'll try to announce it as early as I know ahead when I'm doing the reading. We're just reading a a, a book, a shamanic way of the bee book together. It's not live. It's just a a quiet little reading and we discuss it afterward. It's been quite enlightening. Awesome. Very cool. And how great, Roxy, you're having a meetup. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. How wonderful. Yeah, it was kind of an idea of Will, uh, you know, wanting to come down to Dallas and then all of a sudden it turned into a come visit Roxy and then I said, Dan, come and now some more other people coming. So it's a casual get together. We're just going to get together and hang out for the weekend and see what happens. So if anyone happens to be in the, you know, in the area, just come on by. Just give me a call, or email me or, you know, get a hold of me and just come hang with us. Yeah, that information is on the uh, Google Plus events page. Rowie, you have an announcement or something? More of a question. Okay. Hello, darling. Hello. Who likes a story? I like a story, buddy. <laughs> oh, we all love yeah. stories. Uh-huh. Do you, you have a story, Rowie? In the future? You want to hear more stories in the future? I certainly well, you've certainly got it, because they are coming. <laughs> oh, you're cute. You're clever. <laughs> yeah. 
Story Cat time is still in the bag for now, but once yeah, it's yeah. released, let's yeah. uh, let's create some really good purring together. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. So a little hint for you guys. A little hint that. for stories. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Please explain. That seems to be a theme these days because Sheldon's also been doing a, a, an evening story time um, that he's been put publishing on his YouTube channel, and it's been actually a lot of fun, uh, uh, kind of a creative, um, impromptu kind of thing. It's been kind of, it's hilarious, actually. Love yeah, it. it'd be interesting to mix the two together as well. I'm going to put them Love in touch. So. Oh, yeah, he'd be really into that, really, because he's really into the storytelling thing. So, story- mm. oh, he loves it. Mm. I've met Watkins a couple of times. Who is he? <laughs> if anybody knows who Watkins, Watkins is. Funny, too. I was like, Watkins? <laughs> Uh, Watkins. No, what, not Watkins. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, Watkins. Yeah, Watkins. Yeah, Watkins is pretty hilarious. He cracks me up. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Sorry let's to do, interrupt. Uh, who wants, no, no, no. That's perfect. Uh, whoever wants to do the blessing, let's do that. Uh, and so let the YouTubers go on about their yes. mouths, and we'll do our thing. Who would like to okay. do it today? Wendy? Anything else? Are we good, Roe? Are you all good? Oh, I want you to do it, Wendy. You do a great job. Yeah. You, no, I just want—I want to make sure you didn't have anything else too that you wanted to mention. Ah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. There's probably 101 things, but I want to hear you shine. Okay, beautiful, everyone. Wow, such a great, great day of gorgeous information. And as you know, we've all been absorbing all these beautiful energies since our um, lunar eclipse, full moon, and all the things that have taken place with our beautiful Earth and the ascension and. Um, we're all in a beautiful place right now, and there's a lot of energies around right now that are, are very interested in how we're moving forward and very excited about how we've been moving forward and how excited exciting things are to come. So there's a lot of great, exciting energy around me right now um, in observing these, these interactions. Um, every day is a learning experience on both sides. Siti liasa tayo malaya sa tika kalarami nani anuraka. Salakor kia taya malio sotoro asia nani. Sotura asa tilia sotoro a pai ko ya malo guayata. Pai kasha yo malo ro sa kia tala kasina. Maharula asima liatora kaseni ananawa kalarashi ata. Nihiliasa sonomaliasa kito. Palatoyo, mileaso toyo rahi satoru kwa, la koke yatayoku asa mala kokurashina. Malukura soyo kwa soto lua hasina, si kia toyo kosho rahi sanataha. Likitoa, malura hasaniyasa, si tiki ashoru hu sonomalia kakora kito. Malohasa Makura Kaluku to Yukura Mala Ketia Torahila Sinia Alakaya to Yukura Payawaso Sonomaloasa to Yukura Kialahi Nisitia Sotura Kashayamala Mawuru Hoi Kialia Sotur Kapilias Sonyan Yanayana Wakalokwa Hapalia Sinia La Kura Kalia Toha Kapaki Sotolua Hapaki Sata Salurahi saniyatuha, shorukula soto yukwa shoya kiha, silitia toyoko shoya nina na soto luwaka shoha, siliko ikueshuna. As you all together together with the chakras of your planet, you will begin to feel the energies that you're gathering together in your light. Remember that the veil is simply the belief. And the belief is the veil, and your things that have taken place in our beautiful earth and the ascension, and um, we're all in the beautiful. Your guys now that are are very oh. interesting. Your guides are here, all around you, and it is as simple as asking. There is no mystery to it. It is simply ask, 
and they are there. They're all around you. They're with you. It is simply an intention. Siti Akoasha. It is only it is only your belief that prevents you from speaking to them. They can hear you. Speak aloud. They are with you always. Isiti Akalakoso Nuasha Shoaki I Sitiaha. Lisiti Akotoroaha Titayaha. The benefit of this energy is being aware of their existence and their nearness to you, for now you will be able to feel them, their physical presence within you. They speak to you everywhere. Every synchronicity is an answer. And as Osiphius points out, the answer is indeed always in the question. You are becoming aware of the multifaceted beings that you are. You are accessing all the all that you are. They are all speaking to you. You hear them. Trust, trust what you're hearing. You say it is only my imagination, but yes, it is your imagination that is the key. It is the key to the door. So as you walk among the trees, remember, it is in the quiet that you hear the loudest. Turn off your mind and turn on. Turn on your headphone. And trust what you are hearing. And know that when you ask, it is given. It is always given. It is only that it is only in the now and trusting what you are hearing in the now that you will find yourselves. The love you feel in your heart space is your compass, your guide to telling you you are on the correct path. Trust it always. It will always light your way. Your instinct is your guide. May you always move in harmony. Mahala. Mahala. Beautiful. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much, Wendy. All right, Guru, I think we'll wrap it up. Everybody we will. Thank goodbye. you, everybody, for watching Hukalo TV. We can be found at humancolony.org. Thank you all. Have a blessed Saturday. and See you next time.